In this video, we will talk about how you can become a better artist with a simple trick. Let's go. Hi guys, you here from Blender Bros and I have a question for you. Would you like to improve as an artist, become more skilled, more efficient and more confident? Well, of course you would. So let's talk about how this can be achieved. Now, the simple trick I'm referring to here is working from references. That's right. We will talk about what it is, why is it so important and how to do it correctly. So first of all, what it is, right? What does it mean for a 3D artist to work from references? Well, it simply refers to using outside sources of inspiration to guide the creation of our 3D models. So we use images or whatnot to, you know, create something very really awesome on our own. This could be anything from photographs, renders, sketches, or screenshots, even movies, anything goes, right? Working from references is one of the best ways to ensure that your work stays grounded in artistic principles and rules. It will also help you to expand your visual library by learning about different objects and environment, also different styles. It's a common practice in the industry and can be very helpful for getting the details right. So now let's talk about why do you need to do this, right? Why do you need to work from references? Well, there are five points I can think of. One is improved accuracy, two is time savings, three is inspiration, four is improved attention to understanding of detail, and five is enhanced credibility. So let's talk about number one, improved accuracy. When working from references, you ensure that your models and designs are far more accurate and realistic as they are based on real world objects or images or even solid concept designs created by pro artists. Now, this can be especially important for projects that require a high level of realism or for instance, model that have to stay true to laws of mechanical engineering, like for example, a sci-fi ship landing gear or a hatch when it needs to, you know, make sense, kind of visually make sense and sort of sell the idea that it's actually working, right? Now, the key here is to use good references. Now, this is really important. Do not use bad images. Do not use bad art. Use good art, which means you need to go to ArtStation, find the pros, see who they follow, get as many references as you can, and you're good to go. You can play some sci-fi games or some sci-fi movies when you know that, you know, the content is actually decent. Start gathering these. Number two, time savings. Using references can help you save time by reducing the need to create every aspect of a model or a scene from scratch, right? Instead of tinkering for hours, doodling, etc. You simply search through references and pick ideas that inspire you. Say you are creating a model of a sci-fi ship and you can use images to quickly sketch out the basic shape or a block out, right? Key features of the model rather than spending time on each individual detail. See what you can do is you can simply uh, create like a visual board of objects that kind of resemble what you want to do. Let's say landing gear. So you gather different types of landing gears. And out of these, you can kind of create something on your own. So you can use piece and bits from different designs, and then you create something fresh and original, but you don't have to invent everything from scratch. That saves a lot of time. Three is going to be inspiration. So references can provide inspiration and idea that can help you to explore new styles and techniques. By studying the work of other artists or real world objects, you can learn new ways of creating and designing, which normally you would not think of that is also really important. So you are basically creating a source of fresh ideas, something that's going to trigger your brain and make you think, oh shit, that's pretty cool, right? And you go on with this idea. And the more you do it, the more flexible and the more skilled you become. You could do the same thing with courses, guys. You could go through our free Jumpstart Heart Service in Blender course and create this mechanical arm. And then once you do, you could use that knowledge you gain throughout the course and create something on your own. If you're a bit more advanced, you could grab the terminal course, which is also free, and you know, use that and kind of riff off of it and create something original. So the possibilities are limitless. Number four, improved attention and 
understanding of detail. Now, working from references can help you pay more attention to small details that make a model or scene more realistic or believable. By carefully studying reference images or objects, you can pick up on subtle details that you might otherwise overlook. Think about it, if I asked you to draw an engine, you would forget a lot of details. But when you actually have engines, you know, on your computer, like images of engines, many of them, right? You can create something out of it because you can see what kind of details these engines have. And number five is enhanced credibility. So using reference images in 3D art, you can add credibility to your own work, especially when working on projects that require a high level of realism authenticity or innovation. So by showing that your work is based on either real world uh, concepts or sci-fi um, renders, you can demonstrate your attention to detail and commitment to creating accurate and believable designs. It shows care and professionalism, which is really important, right? Now let's talk about how you should work from um, references because it's actually quite important, right? There are also five points here and let me just kind of list them first. So number one is going to be gather a variety of reference images. Number two, study the reference material. Three, use reference images as a guide, not a copy. Four, organize and label the reference images. And five, don't rely solely on reference images. So let's talk about number one, gather a variety of reference images. You should gather a wide range of reference images to use as a reference while working. This can include images of specific objects or scene being modeled, as well as images of similar objects or scene for comparison and inspiration. Now, how many do you need? Well, guys, I have tens of thousands of them, okay? I have over 40 gigabytes of pure ref files. I'm using free program called Pure Ref for this. You can use anything, street photography, movie clips, screenshots from games, renders from art station, anything goes, as long as it's good art. Key here is to make sure that the art in those images is objectively of high quality. You know, surround yourself with good material. You need to immerse yourself with decent screenshots or, you know, references. Let me give you a simple example here. Let's say you're learning a language from someone, right, who is not a native speaker of that language. So let's say someone is German and they teach you English, but they've never been living or visited, you know, the UK, US, Australia, whatever. And they try to teach you English. Well, they can teach you grammar, maybe, but you will never learn the proper pronunciation. So what I'm saying is that you need to immerse yourself in art that's objectively good. You need to immerse yourself in the real deal, okay? So that's really important. Number two, study the reference material, okay? To be able to use reference correctly, it is important for you to fully understand the reference material you're using. This means studying the images or objects in detail and considering factors such as lighting, perspective, composition, scale, etc. Lastly, make sure that you try to use reference in similar style to what you're trying to create. So don't use Disney crap in order to design a sexy spaceship, do you know what I mean? Or I'll have to come down and slap you. You need to try to match the style of your reference images to whatever you're trying to create. That is really important. Number three, use reference images as a guide, not a copy. So while reference images can be a useful tool, it's important to use them as a guide rather than simply copying them. You should aim to use the reference material to guide you through the creative process and simply add to your own personal style and work. This is absolutely essential, otherwise you become a craftsman, not an artist. Remember, modeling is a skill, but designing is an art. So if you want to become an artist, you need to break from copying into actually creatively modeling something. So use reference and images to anchor you, okay, to, to kind of inspire you, to, to create this oh shit moment, right? So when you're looking, the way I work, guys, Okay, I'm looking at many images. I mean many. If I'm designing a Mac like, I'm looking at a lot of Mac likes. I'm looking at the designing from the mechanical standpoint. I'm looking from the aesthetical standpoint and I'm trying to find something that agrees with me. And when I find that, I'll get the idea, the general idea, okay, 
and start building upon it. And then when you need more inspirations and more details in terms of details, you can look at other images, other references. Do you see what I mean? So this is how you should be doing it. Number four, organize and label the reference images. To make it easier to find and use reference images while working as a 3D artist, you should organize them and label the images in a way that makes sense. I work with PureRef, like I said, you know, PureRef software, it's free. And I have my references stored in themed files. So like, you know, Max, uh, helmets, guns, sniper rifles, whatever, right? So do what you have to do in order to create folders or whatever, you know, your own system, it doesn't matter. Whatever it takes to keep it neat, because let me tell you, you will need loads of references and eventually you're gonna get lost. So if you're gonna have one massive reference file with all shit jumped into it, that's just gonna work, okay? Split them into themes. It's gonna be easier to find stuff when you need it, okay? And last one, point number five, do not rely solely on reference images. While reference images are an invaluable resource, make sure that you don't rely on them in 100%. You should use your own creativity and intuition to come up with new ideas and approaches to your work. Now, I know that it may sound daunting, because it does, especially when you just, you know, just start it. You sit there staring in the blank space in Blender, you don't know what the hell to do. Well, that's why you should be using reference images. But trust me, the more experience you'll get, the easier it becomes, okay? You need to just keep plowing, keep going through it. And this is where reference images and building your own visual library will pay a massive role, okay? It will help you to overcome these blocks. The more you study them, the more you will know. It's like being well-traveled. You know this phrase, well-traveled? A person who has visited or lived in many places and experienced many different cultures and ideas? Well, such person will have a broader understanding of many topics, right? Simply because they have a wider spectrum of vision and experience. The same principle applies to references. The more cool shit you've seen, the more memories you'll have. The more memories you have, the easier it will become to build on them and therefore create really awesome, unique designs that you can call your own. So that's my advice to you guys on how to become a better artist. Use really good references, start building your library and start using them. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.